I need a hat. I look like an egg. What's going on, folks? Zach from Mushu Shelf here. Hope you guys are doing good and reading lots of manga. Welcome to 5-Minute Manga. Super quick manga reviews so you can get back to reading manga instead of staring at my bald head. Twinkle, twinkle, shine. Today's manga is something of a classic from all the way back in the year 2005. From a mangaka that everybody knows and loves the world over, and that is Solonin by Inio Asano. Now, before we get into it, I would recommend reading Solonin before watching this video as this is not a spoiler-free review. Additionally, Solonin deals with some very real issues such as loss or suicide, so if you find yourself affected by those in any way. I'll leave some links down in the description below for places you can call, places you can visit for if you need someone to talk to or if you just need some help. So with that in mind, let's jump right into it. Solonin follows Mako and Tanada, a couple who have been out of university for the better part of two years and out in the real world with no real goals or thoughts in mind aside from just going to work and going about their day. Their unhappiness and listlessness soon leads them to take drastic action. Mako quitting her job and Tanada devoting the entirety of his time to writing his band's first proper song. The first half of this manga perfectly captures that sort of early 20-something uncertainty, where you jump through all the hurdles you're told you need to do to get to adult life, and once you get to adult life you find yourself asking, wait, is, is this is this it? Is this all there is? It even manages to portray that sort of lingering rebellious angst, where you constantly tell yourself you're gonna quit that job and pursue your dreams only to get up the next day and, and go to work like you didn't say anything at all. Now, the tone of this manga takes a sharp left turn about halfway through. Despite their pact of pursuing their dreams no matter the cost, Tanada reveals to Mako that he's actually begged for his job back, explaining that he never really wanted to make music that would change the world. He just wanted to play in a band with his friends and with Mako, even if doing that came at the cost of working crappy full-time jobs for the rest of his life. Touched by this, Mako tells Tanabe to come home right away. And as Tanabe is driving his moped home, he begins to tell himself, I'm happy, I'm happy with life, and something inside of him starts questioning that and saying, are you really happy? The next thing you know, he's lying in the middle of the road, his head is bleeding, and he dies. The latter half of the manga follows Mako and the bandmates Rip and Kato, and while the bulk of the focus is on Mako and how she's dealing with her grief, we also get glimpses into the butterfly effect that Tanabe's death has had on everybody in his life. Now, the big turning point for Mako's grief is when Tanabe's father comes to collect his belongings from their apartment. She had only met his father once or twice before, but notes that, like Taneda, he's actually quite easy to talk to. Mako reveals to his father that she feels somewhat guilty for his death, how if he hadn't been here with her, maybe he would have been alive still. But his father reveals that a couple of days before Taneda's death, he had actually spoken with Taneda, and Taneda had been making these plans to come home, but eventually went back on that, saying, I found something that is precious to me that makes me want to stay here. Given that, he tells Mako that if she still feels like she's to blame, then to not forget him and that perhaps her life's purpose is to make sure that other people knew that Taneda existed. And as she considers that, she picks up Taneda's guitar and begins to learn it. Mako begins channeling her grief and her emotions into learning the guitar with her new life's purpose in mind. Mako, Rip, and Kato also find themselves not just mourning alone, but celebrating Taneda's life together. And then we come to the concert. The night that the three of them, especially Mako, have been working so hard towards. When it comes time to sing that last song that Taneda wrote, the titular Solonin, Mako's focus is entirely on performing this song, and even on paper, with no notes and with no sound, you can really feel the just raw, pure emotion she's pouring into it. Now, I never usually say this, because I truly believe that manga is the ultimate storytelling medium, but I'm going to leave a link to this scene in the live-action movie in the description below, because as great as this scene is in the manga, it just completely hits different in the movie. The song itself was written by Inio Asano and composed by Asian Kung Fu Generation, but in the movie is actually sung by Mako's actress, Aoi Miyazaki. And look, I'm willing to admit this, but this scene makes me bawl like a fucking baby every time I watch it. Just hearing all her grief, her love for Taneda, and her desperate desire to make sure he's remembered is so unbelievably moving. And only second to that, one of my favorite bands, Yonike, also covered the song a couple of years back, and if you just imagine it's Mako singing it, you'll get chills. The manga ends with everybody gathering at Mako's apartment and helping her pack and move out. After everything's moved out, she hangs back in the empty apartment, hugs Taneda's guitar, and, much like life, continues marching forward. Solonin is possibly Inio Asano's easiest manga to get into, but the double-edged sword here is that it is so rooted in this sort of mundane realism that all the emotional bits cut a little deeper. It's easier to see yourself in these characters compared to pretty much any other manga he's ever written, and it turns out that's actually somewhat intentional. In the afterwards of the manga, he writes, There's nothing cool about these characters. They're just your average 20-somethings who blend into the backdrop of the city. But the most important messages in our lives don't come from the musicians on stage or the stars on television. They come from the average people all around you. The ones who are just feet from where you stand. 
To get real with you folks, I'll admit that I've been in Tanya's shoes more often than I'd like to be. Where I'm just constantly overwhelmed, fighting between doing what I have to do, and knowing that I'll never really be able to do what I want to. And it's sort of up to interpretation as to whether or not Tanabe purposely drove into traffic. Knowing what this sort of feels like, I'm leaning more towards the fact that he did. But seeing the effect that Tanada's death had on not just Mako, but everyone in his life, really actually kind of helped me work through all that. And while I haven't personally dealt with loss myself, those I know who have, and have read Solonin, have told me that it's one of the most perfect books you could read to help yourself through that. So if you find yourself working through any of these sort of issues, short of calling someone to help you if you're in immediate need of it, give Solon in a read, because I, th I think you'll find that it might actually help you more than you'd imagine. Anyways, folks, that is it for today's video. Let me know what you think about this new five-minute manga, really quick review format thing. Trying something new out. I'm just seeing if I can condense all my thoughts on a manga as concise as possible to make sure that you guys are you have more time to read your manga instead of just watching me, but, but also... But also don't stop watching me because I kind of thrive on this and I have nothing else in my life right now. So please don't go anywhere. And before I get into the whole YouTuber outro spiel, you probably noticed I didn't include the epilogue in this review. And that was on purpose. I actually don't like the epilogue at all. I don't think it adds anything to the story. I think the manga wrapped up perfectly. You didn't really need to add anything else. It's kind of a really fan service -y look at what happens to Mako and the apartment afterwards. But the two things that really bother me about the epilogue is that the art style is different. It doesn't have that kind of really charming old style that Inuosana used to have. It's more of his refined style, which I love, don't get me wrong, but I don't think fits with Solonin. And I won't spoil it, but just who Mako ends up with in the end? Why? Why does he, why does she end up with him? Ah, Annoying, it's, it's dumb. I don't like the epilogue. If you, if, I don't even know if you can buy it. If you can, maybe I'll leave a link in the description below. I know it was kind of an exclusive at the Toronto Comic Arts Festival when Inio Sano came there a few years back. But honestly, you don't even need to read it. This manga is perfect as is. And speaking of links in the description, if you want to check out Solonin, I will leave links to where you can do that down in the description below, where you can buy it, where you can read it, so on and so forth. And if you have read Solonin, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, over on Twitter or on Instagram, at each shelf. I'd love to hear what you think of this manga. It's one of my favorite Inio Sano manga. One of my favorite manga of all time, now that I think about it. And I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. But until next time, folks, happy reading. Um, outro, uh, this is an outro, yeah. you're free to go now, seriously leave, um, I, I mean, why are you sitting here, man, get out of here, man, go, come on, leave, goodbye.